Hello there Lunar Squadron and welcome back to the channel. Earlier today, IGN officially released their hands-on preview for Jedi Survivor. This is something that they had teased was coming very soon and something that we were very much waiting to get our hands on because we knew that this hands-on preview would provide so much more new information about the gameplay and story for Jedi Survivor and that is exactly what is included in this hands-on preview. IGN went ahead and in tandem released a brand new video that featured new gameplay footage which I will be laying over the top of this video and they went ahead and released this article that provided so much cool and exciting new gameplay and story details for Jedi Survivor so what I want to do is I just want to read through this article together and break down and analyze what information we get along the way but before we jump into this real quick if you're new to the channel we would love to have you as always and the way to do that is just go down below this video hit that little subscribe button the bell notification right on next to it it will notify you every single time andreas and i upload the latest and greatest star wars and jedi survivor content now with that out of the way let's go ahead and just start reading through this article let's skip the introduction get right into the meat of this article so where i want to start is right here where it says my preview time was broken up with me spending about four hours on the planet Kobo, a gigantic and wide open planet that largely serves as Cal's home away from home throughout the course of Jedi Survivor's story. This was something that Andreas and I were wondering, with Kobo being such a massive planet in this game, would this serve as one of the main central hubs in a sense in Jedi Survivor? And that appears to be exactly the case. Kobo will be Cal's home away from home and then he says and then about an hour on a moon planet to showcase some more traditional combat and platforming encounters that fans have come to expect let's start off with kobo because it represents the biggest change in jedi survivor versus fallen order a vast open world that sprawls out in every di direction with interesting encounters and rewards everywhere you turn then the preview shifts to talking all about the new information we have about kobo some of it familiar but again some of it brand new so he says We've already shown you nine minutes of Kobo gameplay as part of our IGN first coverage, but we have what we haven't really gotten to point out is the fact that most of that footage covers only the introduction to the planet, which is a fairly traditional linear portion that guides you through caves, valleys, and mountain trails, but then opens wide up once you get to the southern reach, in a moment that brought to my mind the very first time you step out onto the Great Plateau in Breath of the Wild. So. That is exactly what that nine minutes of gameplay really looked like. It looked like a very linear experience where you're kind of just working your way down the side of that mountain and that plateau and through those caves. It looked very linear. So it's very exciting to hear and what we were expecting to hear that once you get past that part, once you get to the southern reach of Kobo, the game really opens up and that planet really opens up into a more open world type planet. He continues with, my main goal throughout this entire section was to reach the cantina to find someone to repair my crashed mantis ship. They did mention in that nine minute gameplay sequence that that did happen earlier on in Jedi Survivor and that was after Cal had crash landed on Kobo and needed to repair the mantis ship. So that is again, your first objective is to go ahead and try to find someone to help you repair the mantis ship. And he says, and I could have just booked it over there to get on with the story, but if I did, I would have missed out on so much meaningful exploration. Off in one direction, there was a hidden cave that housed an incredibly tough and incredibly cool boss battle that I'd be remiss to spoil for you here. Off in another direction, there was a Bedlam Raider camp with the Stormtrooper armor on spikes and a ni nasty surprise waiting for me in a trap door that led underground. And if I took another path, I'd eventually find a Jedi chamber that housed a gigantic puzzle room. Other paths still were closed off to me until I found a particular upgrade. So here he's providing that there are so many different directions that you can head off to in Kobo, but even with all of these directions, that wasn't the extent of them because you would come back later in the game with more upgrades and you would be able to unlock even more pathways for Cal to explore on Kobo. So again, we've already kind of figured this was going to be the case, but Kobo sounds like it is going to be absolutely massive now there is one thing i want to point out that he doesn't mention in this article that he did mention in the video he talks about how when he makes his way down the cantina that's kind of where one of the bigger story beats happens in this game and that does make me wonder if when cal goes down to the cantina since we know it is in that town which we will get the name of this town later on will this be where we finally 
run into Ravis and that whole sequence starts that we saw from the gameplay trailer. It just makes me wonder if that is the sequence that he is talking about. The next article, as he continues, says even better, all of these excursions felt appropriately rewarding. Most offered me skill points for my trouble, which are much more valuable in Survivor due to the fact that there are now individual skill trees for each lightsaber stance, your force powers, and for flat health and force upgrades. And even the treasure chests that offer cosmetic items have vastly improved rewards due to the fact that you can find entirely different outfits for Cal to wear, as opposed to just different designs of ponchos. In addition to that, you can even find new hairstyles to equip Cal with. My personal favorite so far was a bandana that made him look a little bit like Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. So here we have confirmation. He kind of drops this in near the end of this paragraph nonchalantly. But here we have confirmation that in addition to just being able to customize Cal's appearance from his clothes, you will also be able to change what different hairstyles Cal has. And I assume that means you will also be able to change his facial hair appearance. But... If, you, if that was something you were looking forward to and hoping would be in this game, you will be able to change the hair that Cal has. This makes me think back to when we did our potential DLC and we did our speculation for that. And Andreas was joking around about how cool would it be if they did an Anakin Episode 3 skin for Cal, how you would be able to add that, that long flowing Anakin Skywalker hair. And I kind of gave him some crap for it, but sounds like it might be the case that that is a possibility in this game because you will be able to change Cal's hair. So very interested to see how far they take that customization in terms of changing Cal's hair. But again, just points to that the team at Respawn is very focused on just making this game entirely customizable from your character to your skills, to your gameplay, just all over the place. Definitely looks like they took your feedback into consideration and are trying to make all of the changes may need to make to take Jedi Survivor to the next level. The next paragraph says, Kobo is massive, but thankfully I never felt lost thanks to some truly excellent map features like automatic markers that highlight passageways that lead to unexplored areas, symbols that let you know what areas you can't access yet with your current abilities, a trail that marks the way you just came, and of course, fast travel. And he says, thank Yoda for fast travel. I agree. That is one feature that I'm very excited for. And I know Andreas is excited for just to avoid the needless backtracking, not to say that's a bad thing. And if you are opposed to fast travel, I know we made a video about this and some people were not thrilled that fast travel would be featured in Jedi Survivor. And if this is something you're opposed to, just remember the game is not going to force you to fast travel. If you want to just go ahead and backtrack and just adventure around these planets, you still are going to be able to do that. This is just a new additional feature for people who want to be able to fast travel. And that is something that I think we should be incredibly excited for because again, just shows that Respawn took the feedback they got for Fallen Order and are looking to make the necessary changes. He continues by saying, even better, Cal eventually also gains the ability to tame beasts so we can use them as mounts or as ways to traverse large gaps. All of these additions on top of the just stellar art design all add up to make the act of exploring Kobo a joy. This is something I'm incredibly excited about because one of my biggest issues, and I know an issue a lot of people had with Fallen Order was it just didn't feel like there was a ton of replayability with Fallen Order once you had finished it, just because it was such a linear storyline. You really just played it through for the story. And then if you wanted to return to the game later, you would, of course, there was that arena mode they eventually added, but you would just be replaying it just to go through the story again and experience it again. But it really looks like with Jedi Survivor, at least on Kobo, the team at Respawn is really focused on adding a ton more replayability to this game and just giving you more ways and more avenues to explore the galaxy far, far away and planets there within. The next paragraph, he says, another thing that struck me as I was playing through was how good both the level and enemy design was at setting up opportunities for you to use your force powers in fun ways. Many boss arenas are full of objects that could be force pulled and thrown to deal big damage, Rolling mines are both a constant threat and a constant blessing when you can send them back at pursuing foes. And there were plenty of opportunities to end the battle before it even began by force pushing foes off a ledge. My favorite interaction is when I tried to force pull a staff wielding enemy towards me. He would try to plant his staff into the ground to stop himself. And when that failed, he'd let himself go and attempt to slash while he was pulled towards me. The first time I tried this, he got me, but then I found out that I could parry his desperation attack which allowed me to still turn the tide in my favor. This reminds me of the lightsaber combat gameplay that we just broke down, where the enemy was adapting to how Cal was acting. They were able to parry your parry, and they were able to parry your attacks. And that looks like 
And what we had mentioned was, is it seemed like the AI had gotten a lot smarter in this game and, and they were going to be able to counteract the things that you were trying to do. And here we have confirmation from this IGN hands-on preview that that is actually going to be the case in the game itself because that gameplay that we got that we broke down was just a, a, an arena and a demonstration for gameplay and for combat in Jedi Survivor. That arena will not be featured in the actual game when it releases. The next article says, or the next paragraph says, Kobo is also not a one-stop shop. It's a planet that you're meant to return to many times over the course of Cal's adventure. Aside from the aforementioned locked passageway that Cal won't be able to progress through until he gets a specific upgrade, the cantina and the town it resides in, and here we get confirmation that the town on Kobo is called Rambler's Ranch, doubles as a sort of home base for Cal. There are vendors to purchase new customization options, colorful NPCs to talk to, and every time you come back, you can be certain that there will be something new to check out. I gotta be honest, when we were reading through this hands-on preview, this paragraph right here was probably the one that got me the most excited because it provides just so many cool details and things that both Andreas and I were really looking for and hoping would be in Jedi Survivor. Those are, there are vendors to purchase new customization options. Again, just points to how much Respawn is trying to take the customization in Jedi Survivor to the next level colorful NPCs to talk to. This is a point that Andreas has harped on in one of his biggest complaints, taking it back to Fallen Order was, the game just felt empty. It just didn't feel populated. And it looks like here, at least on Kobo, within the town of Rambler's Ranch, they are trying to provide more people, provide it, make it more populated, give you NPCs to interact with and talk with. And it's just gonna make the game feel more full. And this is something that we've mentioned in the past is something we really look forward in games. It's just a more populated experience just because it makes it more immersive. So it was very exciting to hear that there will be NPCs that you can interact with in Rambler's Ranch. I was really excited about, about that. And the last point he makes in this paragraph, and every time you come back, you can be certain there will be something new to check out. That just sounds incredibly exciting. That sounds like replayability. That sounds like exactly what Fallen Order was missing. And this guy mentions in his hands-on preview that even though he only got to play for roughly five hours, he didn't get to experience the entire game. He could already start to check off his checklist of things that he felt Jedi Survivor needed to improve on from Fallen Order and that he felt like the team at Respawn really took the feedback they got from their fans in Fallen Order and were trying to make a good strong effort to make the game even better in Jedi Survivor. And I gotta say, we haven't gotten our hands on this game yet. We haven't gotten a hands-on preview yet. But I gotta agree, just from the information that we're getting, just from the gameplay that we're getting, yes, I get it. Some people have some issues with some of some of the footage and some of the animations, but it really, really feels like the team at Respawn has poured their heart and soul into making this game even better than Fallen Order and making the best possible Jedi and Star Wars game they possibly can. And we're so excited about it, but this preview doesn't stop there because then he starts to talk about that mysterious moon that we have seen in the marketing materials up to this point that orbits around Kobo. It, it's it's kind of semi-destroyed, it's, it's kind of shattered. And he says that it, it is an unnamed moon. There is no name for it, but he says, the second area I got to play was on an unnamed moon planet that Cal and his companion Bode visit sometime later in the game. In comparison to Kobo, this felt like a much more traditional style of level that would have been right at home in Jedi Fallen Order. So it won't be as open world as Kobo will. And it just makes me wonder, what will the rest of the planets in Jedi Survivor, which formula will they follow? Will they follow more of that traditional Jedi Fallen Order formula? Which is not to say that's a bad thing. We have no problem with the, the way Fallen Order levels were designed, or will they try to follow more of the Kobo approach and offer a more open world experience? It's going to be very interesting to see what we get from the various planets in Jedi Survivor, especially Coruscant. Very interested to see how Coruscant turns out to be. But he continues by saying that isn't to take anything away from it though, because it was a ton of fun with a healthy balance of both death defying platforming challenges and challenging combat encounters. This moon sounds like it is going to be a ton of fun to go through. The next paragraph says the thing that most stood out about this level was there was almost a horror theme to it. Turns out that enemies were expecting Cal, and thus most of them were lying in ambush. The beginning was very tense, and it seemed like enemies were hiding around every corner waiting to get the jump on me. 
Respawn even played to this expectation a few times and would have a harmless droid suddenly come out through the fog, which I totally bit on and sliced the poor innocent bot in half. I want to pause here real quick and just point out that the new gameplay that is featured in this hands-on preview appears to be exactly what he is describing here from this unnamed moon. That is where there is no new gameplay from Kobo in this. It is all just taken from their nine minute preview, but that new gameplay that is showcased does appear to be from this unnamed moon planet that again we believe is orbiting Kobo. The next paragraph says even at a level that was much more linear there still were plenty of goodies hidden off the beaten path including Jedi survivors take on a DMC like challenge room again just adding more replayability giving players a bigger challenge something to return to something to really challenge themselves. He says in it I had to face off against wave after wave of what seemed like hundreds upon hundreds of B1 droids that would all go down in one or two hoods, but could very easily swarm and overwhelm me. It was an absolute blast and surprisingly tough as well. Once they started mixing in some droids that would self-destruct if I didn't force push them or otherwise get the heck out of the way in time, he was in for a rough time. He continues by saying, I love this encounter because it's something that wouldn't have made sense within the context of the actual level. But in a sealed off space where anything goes, it was the perfect kind of combat test. I hope there are a ton more of these and I'd happily search every nook and cranny to find them. And then the final paragraph of this hands-on preview, he says, I could go on talking about the Jedi Chamber puzzle rooms, the fun new force powers, the exciting story beats that took place after I stepped foot into the cantina. That's kind of what I was talking about that he mentioned in his voiceover in the video is, I wonder if the story beat he's talking about after he steps foot into the cantina in Rambler's Ranch is where he has his face off with Ravis for the first time, just because that's what appears to be happening from that gameplay trailer. But we really just will not know until we get more information. And he says, or some of the awesome boss battles that I had to overcome. But it's all stuff that's probably better experience for yourself once the game comes out on April 28th. And the hands-on preview article ends there. Within the video that they released alongside, we do get a look at our first encounter, our first encounter in the HUD with a reprogrammed Magna Guard. And this gameplay looks incredibly exciting. Andreas and I sat down and we talked about this hands-on preview. And he said that seeing the Magna Guard in action took him back to the days of Revenge of the Sith and just brought back that level excitement. And I gotta say, I completely agree with him. This mini boss battle against the Magna Guard looks incredibly fun, looks incredibly exciting, incredibly heart pumping. You just get it, that adrenaline going. It looks like so much fun, especially when he has the staff and you're using the double bladed saber and there's kind of parallels there in the combat system. It looks like a ton of fun. I just, I can't wait for this. It does also provide at least some level of confirmation that the Magna Guards will serve as more of the mini, the mini boss enemy type in Jedi Survivor. They won't just be those standard grunt enemies that you will come across, which is to be expected from that enemy breakdown we got from IGM where they said the Magna Guard was a higher class of enemy. And here we finally get video evidence, gameplay evidence of that exact point. Anyway, guys, that is the entirety of IGN's hands-on preview as a part of their IGN first. We got so many exciting brand new gameplay and story details and even some new gameplay footage for Jedi Survivor. So let us know down below in the comments which detail, what you learned from this hands-on preview got you the most excited for Jedi Survivor. We definitely want to hear from you. We love interacting with all of you and just getting your thoughts on Jedi Survivor because we know a ton of you are excited for this game and we are incredibly excited for this game. So definitely let us know what your favorite part of this hands-on preview was down below in the comments. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for me for this one. Thank you all so much for watching and as always, we will see you all next time.